Tonight, you will hear three remarkable stories of Pierce College successes. They are just a handful that represent thousands of stories every day at Pierce College. But I think you will walk away this evening with profound respect for what these three individuals have accomplished in their lives. Pierce College is humbled to have played some role in their journeys. Tonight, you'll meet people who have conquered monumental odds, who have made the most of their skills, talents, and dreams, and who are making the world a better place every day. But before we meet our alumni, I have some very special people to introduce. Please join me in welcoming two trustees of Pierce College, Angie Rorty, Vice Chair of Board of Trustees and also the ex officio member of the Foundation Board. And also one of our trustees, Jackie Rosenblatt. We also have several Pierce College Foundation Board members with us tonight. Please stand when I call your name so we can acknowledge you. Judy DeJardin, Les Watts and her husband Don, Dave Hamry and his wife Barb, Phil Yates and his wife Linda, Marty Lovedell and his wife Liz, Linda Evanson and her husband Jerry, Susie Russell Hall and her husband Dale, Jeff Brown and his wife Jan, Mike Bryant, Abby Cole, Jonathan Harris, and Jody Woodcock. Thank you all for being here tonight. We also have a former foundation board member, Jan Lucas, with her husband, Mayor Ron Lucas from Stillicum. We're also grateful for those who step forward and sponsor this banquet. For the second year, we have a corporate sponsor, Boeing Employees Credit Union, represented tonight by Abby Cole. Thank you, Abby. Additional sponsors are former distinguished alumni John Gibson of Cool Cycles. John, you're here somewhere? Thank you for being here. Joyce McDonald, Pierce County Council member. Jonathan Harris, Deputy Director, Rodeo and Air Expo at JBLM. And Foundation Board member Susie Russell Hall, local artist and medical illustrator. Also in our audience tonight are 17 current Pierce College students from our leadership team, student newspapers, business, and English as a Second Language departments. These students have been sponsored by board members Dave Hamry, Judy DeJardin, Phil Yates, Glenn Zevenbergen, and faculty member Deb Ramirez. Thank you guys for being here. And a special welcome to you students. I have a feeling you will find inspiration in the stories that you hear tonight and hope we will be seeing all of you receiving this award in the next couple of years. I'd like to thank all of the current and former faculty members who are here tonight and who make a difference in our students' lives every day. Can you please stand and be recognized? And I'm really fortunate to work with a remarkable team of leaders here at Pierce College. Please help me recognize Pierce College CEO and Chancellor, Dr. Michelle Johnson. <laughs> President of Pierce College, Fort Stillicum, Denise Yoakum. <laughs> President of Pierce College, Puyallup, Colette Pierce Burnett. <laughs> Dr. Deb Gilchrist, Vice President of Student Learning and Learning Success. And Joanne Beria, Vice President of Workforce, Economic, and Professional Development. Now I'd like to invite Dr. Michelle Johnson to the podium to tell you a little bit about the Pierce College District. Michelle has worked for Pierce College for 30 years and is one of the largest donors to the Pierce College Foundation. She supports Pierce College and our students in every way imaginable. Michelle, come on up. Well, thank you so much, Pat. It is great to have Pat's leadership and our foundation members who work tirelessly for Pierce College. You give of your time, you give of your resources, and you bring individuals to our community. And I'm so grateful for you to be here, and thank you so much. On behalf of our Board of Trustees, our college presidents, and our faculty and staff, I'd like to welcome all of you tonight to this wonderful event. I know that our three alum are really pleased that you're here to support their efforts. It really has been an honor for me to serve the Pierce College District. It is an amazing place 
And you know, all of you are here because you have some connection to Pierce College. But you may not know all the ins and outs of our district. Each year, we serve more than 25,000 students across the district. We have two colleges here at Puyallup and at Fort Stillicum in Lakewood. We also have a major off-campus site at Joint Base Lewis-McChord, as well as programs at Western State Hospital, Rainier School, and a number of community sites, usually with ESL and our basic skills programs serving those communities, as well as continuing education. You know, our students, they, they come to us from so many different places, with so many different interests, levels of preparation, and goals. They aspire to one of our four mission areas, and for them, so many are the first in their family to go to college. They come to us with both excitement and apprehension. And it's really our goal to help them along their journey. So whether they come to us in one of four key mission areas, whether it's to prepare to transfer to a university, or to get the skills to go to work right now today, or to get their basic skills, their GED, and their English as a second language, or they've chosen to be a lifelong learner, participating in one of their continuing education classes. When they come here, I'm proud to say that our faculty and our staff work extremely hard in both developing and delivering quality educational opportunities so that these students can achieve their dreams and their goals. For us, we have had great success. We've been nationally recognized for our superior library, for our military education programs, for our marketing and communication strategies, as well as for um, programs in the arts, in music. We've had athletic awards. Our students participate in a wide variety of activities, student government, clubs, and leadership. They learn the skills to be leaders in our community. We're really proud of the possibilities that are created. And you see that on our sign here. Our foundation creates possibilities so that our students can realize those possibilities. I think tonight, when you hear these three stories, you will know why each and every day we come to work to serve these students and to see as they reach out and go into our communities and make a difference. Whether they come to us so that they can have creativity through our arts and humanities, whether they're inspired to be entrepreneurs through our business management programs, whether in nursing, or dental hygiene or veterinary technology in our healthcare fields. It really doesn't matter where they come, it's where they go. And so today, tonight, you're gonna hear three incredible stories of a journey that we played a little part in and hope to continue to be part of their lives. With that, I have the opportunity tonight to introduce our MCs. Both of these individuals are distinguished. The first, Jody Woodcock. Jody was and is a distinguished alum of Pierce College. She was chosen in 2010. She's the interim director of emergency management um, for Pierce County. And she's a brand new member of the Pierce College Foundation. And we appreciate that. With her tonight is the Honorable Judge Gary Johnson. He was selected in 2011 by then Governor Christine Gregoire to serve on the bench of the Pierce County Superior <coughs> Court. He's last year's distinguished alum. So please join me in a warm welcome for our two MCs, Jody and Gary. I was on the other page there. All right. 
It is a great honor to be a part of this inspiring ceremony. I proudly call myself an alumni of Pierce College or Fort Stillicum, and if some of you remember, Clover Park Community College from 1969. It's great to be surrounded by so many of you. I'd like to recognize a few former distinguished alumni who are in the room with us tonight. John Gibson. John, are you here? There you are. There you are, John. Owner of Cool, of cool Cycles. I think we did this before, but uh, Joyce, Joyce McDonald, where are you, Joyce? But she didn't come? Oh, I see her down at the courthouse with some regularity. She's a Pierce County Council member. And Jonathan Harris? John? Jonathan? There you are. Oh, yeah, you're sitting with me. U.S. Air Force Reserve and new Foundation Board member. All right. It is wonderful to be here tonight, and I always love it when I get an opportunity to be on the microphone because I publicly recruit. So all of you students in the room, I'm watching. <laughs> I've already, I've, uh, I've hired one Pierce College student in my 911 program. I have another Pierce College intern, so I just, I love to take you in. So it's, it's an honor to be here. Now we're adding three more people to the distinguished list of alumni from Pierce College. Each of them is so deserving of the recognition. And this year they are Kurt Fletter, co-owner of Power Plastics Corporation. All right, Kurt. <laughs> Denise Randall, Director of Education and Employment for Making a Difference in Community. Congratulations, Denise. And Alan Kropp, President and Founder of Mutineer Magazine, which is fabulous. I took a look at it. It's awesome. Robert Louis Stevenson said, Do not judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the, the seeds you plant. So true, isn't it? Everybody in this room knows that's true. It's not the harvest, is it? It's the seed. This university or this college, I call it university, <laughs> this facility, like everyone across the country just like it or similar to it, gives people the opportunity to plant the seed. There is no harvest with no seed. This is the institution that makes it happen. It not only gives the opportunity to plant the seed, but the opportunity to learn that planting the seed is number one. It's not the harvest, it's the seed. Now let's learn a little bit more about these three remarkable people. Kurt Fletter is the owner of Power Plastics Corporation, which manufactures products that keep roller coasters rolling, help salmon negotiate river dams, and, if all goes as planned, will prevent the Narrows Bridge from tumbling down in an earthquake. <laughs> I certainly hope it all goes as planned. <laughs> Kurt is an Army veteran and now lives in West Lynn, Oregon with his wife, Denise, and their three children. Congratulations, Kurt. <laughs> Let's watch the video. We started the business in our closet, in our den. Uh, I was about maybe 25. We had no money, and so we uh, basically both, my partner and I, maxed out our credit cards. So what we're doing is we're using plastic to replace steel uh, in moving parts. And so uh, plastic actually, the type of plastics that we use um, have extreme resistance to wear. What we specialize in is in the fabrication of the parts. So we uh, specialize in fabrication of sprockets. Uh, we specialize in the fabrication of gears, pulleys, raceways, um, rollers. It's a very high-tech job. Um, you, you, you use CAD CAM program, programming, and um, you design parts. You draw them on the computer. When I was in high school, I. Um, I injured myself in woodshop. I cut off three fingers on my right hand. And um, I was a diver, of course. I, I dove for uh, Lakes High School. We were uh, state champions at the time. I wasn't a very good student. I was probably a C student. Uh, and so everything hinged around, you know, my diving or whatever. And then when I had the accident, it was like that wasn't going to happen. And then when I went, went to Central, they were like, yeah, we really want you to come dive for us, but you have, don't have the grades that, to get into the school because 
in high school you didn't have the grades and, and they said well if you could just go for a little while to Pierce College or show us that you can get some grades then you could come back and, and die for us. It's like they've spent quite a bit of money sprucing things up since I was here 25 years ago. I, I came to Pierce College and it was hard. Uh, I think the first was like <clears throat> I forgot everything going to Pierce College and taking the classes. Uh, I, I, I think that it gave me the confidence that, that I needed to uh, go on. Without Pierce College, I, I, I'm sure that I would not have been able to do a four-year degree. College Distinguished Alum. Nice. There you are. Thank Save you very you. much. All right. The last time I took speech class was at Pierce College 27 years ago. <laughs> this is most likely my five minutes of fame, so bear with me and we'll try to get through this together. <clears throat> You can always tell a student who's attending a four-year university. They'll refer to their schools by letter. I go to UW, U of O, WSU. They also might refer to themselves as some sort of animal. I'm a dog, a duck, a beaver, or a cougar. One word or a few letters, and that's all they need to say to let you know where they go to school. Well, you never get one-word answers when you ask a kid who's attending community college. You never get one-word answers when you ask them where they're going. <clears throat> You're not going to get a quick answer. You might even get a lengthy excuse about how their financial papers weren't turned in or how they lost their high school's transcripts. Any plausible excuse as to why they were not attending a big school quite yet. Well, 27 years later, I'm proud to tell people how I attended community college. <clears throat> First, I served my country in the armed forces before I served myself. That's right, while attending community college, I worked two part-time jobs and lived in my own apartment. I paid my way through school, transferred, and graduated debt-free from the mighty Central Washington University with a bachelor's degree in business. By making it a habit to attend summer classes at Pierce College, I was able to earn enough credits to graduate on the three and three quarter year plan. I did it the hard way. I took the path that got me here today and Pierce College was the stepping stone that I needed to pursue the American dream and for that I am thankful. <clears throat> Thank you for giving me this opportunity to honor this special school that is such a savior for our community. I could not be more proud of a college for many, the, for many that is the only feasible option for empowerment through education. Pierce College students are led by an inspired faculty whose primary reason for teaching is the genuine concern for their students' future and the ultimate future of their community. What a noble calling the Pierce College professor pursues. Someday when I grow up, I would like to take some graduate classes and share what I've learned with students in small business classes at a vocational school or a community college. <clears throat> when I graduated high school, it was fairly considered that I wasn't college bound. I joined the Army and spent several years learning to be a private. I quickly learned that simply getting a college degree was all that separated me from a lieutenant. So I signed up for the GI Bill that day. What I failed to understand was that college would be anything but simple for me. Most universities gave me a little chuckle when presented with my past academic achievements at Lakes High School. So one score and seven years ago today, I arrived dressed in my finest Izod shirt and parachute pants on the steps of Pierce College, ready to conquer academia. I quickly learned that I had the college skills of a beginner. 
I quickly realized to achieve the B minus average that I needed to transfer, I was going to have to become the dude that sits directly in front of the professor and attends every class, even the classes that everyone misses. I was going to have to be the guy who never gets it first. I had to speak up for myself or fall behind. <clears throat> I was going to actually have to read the textbooks as opposed to looking at the pictures and reading the review at the end of each chapter. <laughs> you see, people had always reminded me that I had a learning disability, dyslexia. I chose to use my disability as a motivation to immerse myself in school because my future depended on it. Of course, my professors at Pierce College reinforced the notion reinforced the notion that learning some skills were going to be painfully difficult for me by not letting me pass. <laughs> As I experimented with college, I also learned that in some classes I excelled, getting A's and B's with my collection of C's and drop classes. Through the humbling process of taking and retaking classes at Pierce College, I slowly became good at what I was bad at. One class that I remember taking was microeconomics. I became fascinated with the science of behavior as it relates to the human pursuit of cash. <laughs> this was a subject that seemed to be as natural as common sense to me. I took introductory classes in business management and business law. The classes that I took at Pierce College were the catalyst for me to later pursue a degree in business administration at Central Washington. It is this degree that both myself and my business partner, John Yanello, have in common. As a matter of fact, we both lettered at Lakes High School and worked together as night managers at Mountain View Funeral Home <clears throat> while I was a student at Pierce College and he was a student at PLU. As fate would have it, we both ended up getting jobs in Portland and were once again reunited. We started the business as 20-somethings, armed with all the knowledge we thought we needed to be successful. I will say it took us a hell of a lot longer than we ever thought, but eventually we found the success that we had worked so hard to achieve. My journey has allowed me to refund the government two times the value of my GI Bill each year. <laughs> that is a contribution to the general fund that I can be proud of. <clears throat> Technology is growing so fast, it is creating new opportunities that didn't even exist last week. Our young people need to be encouraged now more than ever to create businesses and build institutions that can create jobs and tax base for our community. That is what we can call real sustainability. That is the American dream, and it is right here for the taking, more now than it ever has been before. Once the fire of self-created wealth touches the soul, it begins to spread out and help the community by providing tax base and real wage jobs. Remember, all a beginner needs is a little push. The gravity of the situation will do the rest. <clears throat> I'd like to thank uh, uh, some people that I remember from Pierce College. Uh, Jim Taylor was the director of uh, the swimming pool at the time. And um, I came to Pierce College because of the swimming pool, and now it's gone, which is okay. <laughs> I guess the earthquake took it out. But uh, Jim Taylor was a real uh, law and order kind of guy. He really stuck by the books, and he really preached safety. And uh, I was not that type of person. Uh, Jim ended up giving me a job uh, as a lifeguard at the pool. And then he allowed me to train on the diving board that was there. <clears throat> and Jim shook his head a lot of times and didn't say anything and just walked back into the office <laughs> and let me do my thing. Uh, and I appreciate that. I, I ended up uh, taking 11th place at the national championships in uh, 1990. Uh, I'm, I'm very thankful to Jim for that. I'd also like to thank my father and mother for showing me true love through tough love my, I remember my dad gave me four choices when I was 18, Army, Navy, <laughs> Marines, or the street. I wasn't good enough to get into the Air Force, so that wasn't an option. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'd also like to thank my beautiful Denise, my wife Denise, 
who is also a graduate from community college. She went to Yakima Community College and transferred to my arch rival, Western Washington, <laughs> and became uh, the first person in her family to graduate college. And she became a school teacher. She keeps me grounded and focused on what's truly important, family, community, and faith. Lastly, I'd like to thank my 96-year-old grandmother, who walked away from her bombed out home in Germany during World War II. Back then, she was a newly minted window, widow and a single mother caring for two children, my father and my aunt, who are here today. Her tenacity to come overcome the odds against her will always be recalled in this family. We certainly have come a long way, baby. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kurt. Now, Denise Randall, who in the 10 years since she left Pierce College, she's completed her bachelor's degree, her master's degree, and she's held several positions working with young people. She was an English teacher at Stadium High School and worked in the TRIO program at Henry Foss High School. She is now Director of Education and Employment Programs at Making a Difference in Community. This is one of Pierce County's leading nonprofit organizations. The education program offers college preparation services to low-income students who will be the first in their family to go to college. Denise believes that giving back is critical and that it starts with our youth. She acknowledges the many people that assisted her over the years, but most importantly, she is thankful for getting her start right here at Pierce College. Denise, congratulations, and let's watch a video to get a little better acquainted. I actually started my career at a high school in Tacoma, and very prestigious high school, enjoyed my work there, really loved teaching English. And my first summer with College Bound, I was still employed with, this, with Tacoma School District, and I fell in love not only with the mission of this work, but with the students. I currently, just recently, have been promoted to Director of Education and Employment Programs here at MDC, making a difference in community. And essentially what my roles and responsibilities are, are to assist my staff who are working to help first generation low income students graduate from high school and enter post-secondary institutions. We also help adults in our employment programs who are looking to enter college for the first time, needing assistance with their FAFSA, really navigating the entire college process for many of them for the first time. It's so fulfilling and so rewarding to know that I have been able to directly impact someone's life and their, their future because they were able to go to college. So I'm originally from the South, born in Mississippi, raised in Louisiana. My stepfather was stationed at Fort Lewis and Fort Lewis, and that transition is what brought us to Washington State. I graduated from Lakes High School, which is right up the street from Pierce. At the time, I really wanted to attend a historically black college or university. My mom said, you know, you're just not ready to leave home. You're not ready to leave the nest. Because the community college was right down the street, she felt like it was a great transition into college. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it really was. I enjoyed being at Pierce College. Pierce College was, as I said, an opportunity for me to grow and develop really as a student. Starting at Pierce gave me the confidence to be on the road that I'm at because it was the right step for me instead of me starting bigger than where I was. I had so many first time experiences there as far as growing as a writer, growing as a learner, and I was so excited to be in an environment where the professors really cared and nurtured the excitement that I brought to the environment and to school. So I, I really just cherish my years at Pierce. I think I could listen to her talk about that for hours. That was amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, Denise Randall. Thank you so much. Well, I would.
would be remiss if I did not start this evening by thanking a lot of the people who have made this opportunity possible for me. So the first person that I would like to thank is Ms. Paula Henson-Williams. Paula is the Director of Development and Affirmative Action Officer here at Pierce. And Paula is the person who nominated me. So I was actually in Africa doing some professional work and some personal things that I wanted to do. And um, she found me on Facebook. She's like, I've been calling you. I've been calling you. I was like, oh, I'm in Africa. <laughs> So, Paula, I just want to thank you so much. Even when I was a student at Pierce, um, I'm sure you remember this. When I was president of the Black Student Union, you really provided us a lot of support throughout that entire time that I was a student on campus and the rest of us who were in that group really pushing forward. So I really appreciate you remembering me and nominating me for this award and allowing me to have this opportunity. So let's give her a round of applause. So the next few people um, we can thank collectively once I'm finished. I would like to thank the leadership team at MDC Making a Difference in Community and all of my colleagues who came tonight. There's probably five or six of them strong and I really appreciate that. My president is phenomenal, Mark Pierbrew. Mark, if you can just raise your hand and we can clap at the end. Mark is the president of MDC Making a Difference in Community, just an amazing leader and I really appreciate you providing this opportunity for staff to come support me. The next is staff and my Jane Fellows who are here. So Derek and Susan, thank you for coming and really supporting me. Huge part of where I am today. Um, we have Act 6 supporters in the room, so I want to thank Carrie Streepy for that. And my mother, my mom, Viola, wave your hand. <laughs> My father, who will probably see this video, hi dad. He helped pay for a lot of my books, so I really need the honor. <laughs> and then I would really like to thank my two little sisters. I'm happy to see you made it, Kira. Great, you okay? And then we have Barbara, my two little sisters. So if we can give all of them a round of applause. The thing that I really want to say about Pierce, and it's actually been um, kind of mentioned already tonight, was that Pierce was the right fit at the right time. And it was a community college that really cultivated a solid foundation for a lifetime of success for me. I really believe that this is just the beginning. I currently, as we heard from the video, am a director of education and employment programs at MDC at a nonprofit action agency. Before that, I was working at Foss High School helping youth who were looking to enter post-secondary institutions. Before that, I was teaching AP English at Stadium High School in Tacoma. And before that, I was an Act 6 scholar, leadership, initiative um, recipient at Whitworth University in Spokane. And before Whitworth University, I was a student at Pierce College. And Pierce College was the place that cultivated the soil for all of the seeds that came later. And so there were quite a few things that really made the difference for me that really tilled the ground so that I was prepared for what was to come next. First of all, just convenience. I, I was telling my mother as we were watching the video, mama knows best, because at the time, I was like, what do you mean I have to stay here? I really want to go to historically black college and y'all brought me to Washington and I never really wanted to come. <laughs> so I was really trying to get back south to where the rest of the family was. And my mom said, girl, you're not ready to leave the nest. You know, you need, to, you need to stay here. You need to stay close to home. And I'm so thankful for that, mom, that, that it really was the right fit at the right time for me. So the convenience of it being right in my backyard, um, as far as cost and, and being able to participate in the different activities that were on campus was perfect. There were so many choices for me as a student at Pierce College as far as the different degree <coughs> options. At the time, I was actually very much interested in being a businesswoman. I always knew I wanted to dress well and just be like an executive. And I was so excited because I started out at Pierce on that track. Of, I'm going to be an executive and I'm going to wear nice suits and I'm going to go do business. And I went into my accounting class and I was so excited. And I said, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a little bit more than suits <laughs> and added numbers. I ended up dropping that class really quickly because <laughs> I knew that that was going to impact my transcript. So I got the heck out of there and I said, okay, what's the next thing I like? Well, communication. So you can still wear suits and do journalism and broadcasting. So, so I'll give that a try. 
So I ended up getting a general AA um, degree in actually communications, which was, again, it really tilled the ground for the teaching certification that I would get later. And so a lot of the, the classes that I took and the options that I had for the classes were really phenomenal, and the professors really nurtured me for where I was. And I just want to say, too, um, a lot of times we, you know, especially the students, they think, well, my GPA is not that great, my GPA is not that great. When I left Lakes High School, my GPA really wasn't that great. And <laughs> Pierce was the, the right option to have nurturing staff willing to, to pull me through where I was, but being realistic and honest with me. Um, I actually had a math class that, it was so funny, because we were just kind of button heads, me and this professor. And it was like, okay, mom can't help me, dad can't help me, okay, shoot, nobody can help me in this. I have to figure this out on my own. And well, he failed me. And, and so I'm sitting here looking like, I mean, I wasn't a great student, but I had never failed a class before. So I was like, I can't believe I failed this. And I started like Math 54, y'all. So um, I was like, I have to repeat Math 54. That's <laughs> like 12 plus 12 is 24. But that experience, created an opportunity for me to be able to share that story with my students and to know what it feels like to have to try something over and over again and to stay committed until you finish. And I worked my way up that ladder. And when I have students, when I was teaching through our TRIO program, who would say, oh, Lord, Ms. Randall, I ended up in, in this particular math class or this English class, that's okay. You can start there and work your way up. Ms. Randall, really? Yes, absolutely. Ms. Randall didn't. Ms. Randall, you weren't at that. You, your English was high. No, it wasn't. I worked my way up through the ladder from Pierce, through Whitworth University, through my master's at PLU. Um, I worked all the way up to be able to be where I am today, but you have to start somewhere. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, I've already mentioned the, the quality of the professors who were inspiring and nurturing, the academic support that was there, the writing center and different things, the resources that are available at the institution really made a difference, the support services. And I really want to talk a little bit about the diversity. One of the things that I really cherished um, as far as diversity with the age groups at Pierce was really nice to be in an environment and have older individuals in those classes with me. To have individuals who had students or kids and different things that they had to get away from or you know come back to being able to just kind of talk about that um, really helped um, in my role as a teacher in really understanding all of those different dynamics. So having those experiences earlier really set me up for the challenges that a lot of individuals can face in our community. So all in all, I just want to say again, Pierce College cultivated the soil so that when the seeds came, I was ready to receive them. When the seeds came, I had the tools and the resources and a solid foundation to step up to the plate and walk through the door as various opportunities came. So I want to thank all of you again. Thank you, Paula Henson. Thank you to the leadership team at MDC and the Jay Russell Foundation and, of course, my family for continuously supporting me. Um, I'm really excited for what lies ahead, and I, I thank you all for your work that you do as well, and let's keep the good fight. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Listening to these stories, I was just thinking to myself, you got C's in high school? <laughs> and you with dyslexia. When they told me I had dyslexia, I thought it was a, a foreign car. <laughs> Where's the key? <laughs> Jonathan Winters said, the great Jonathan Winters, if your ship does not come in, swim out and get it. <laughs> I get to introduce you to a young man right in just a few seconds, but boy, talk about swimming out and getting a ship. Holy smoke. Alan Croft is the president and founder of Mountaineer Magazine, a publication that explores fine beverages from wine to coffee to spirits and everything in between. The 75,000 circulation quarterly attempts to cut through the preconceptions that fine beverage is a province of the elite and makes it approachable to people like me and to adults in their 20s and 30s, the demographic collectively called the millennials. Now, in a very different way of considering beverages, he and the mutineer crew began raising money to support water filtration systems for schools in Nepal, a country beset with crumbling infrastructure. Wow. Think about that. Don't we take water for granted? 
step outside and tip your head toward the sky and take a drink. <laughs> but imagine a country where your children don't have any water. He stepped up to the plate, swam out and met the boat. A documentary on the magazine website shows Mr. Allen. I got you here as Croft. I don't want to call you Allen. So it's Allen visiting the five schools that have clean running water thanks to the fundraising effort and a Seattle-based organization now called, appropriately so, Splash. Very good. Congratulations, Alan. Let's watch the video, please. It seems to be a shame uh, to me that someone can go and live a lifetime without ever having a great bottle of wine. Hi. We're Mutineer Magazine, and we are creating the ultimate guide to pursuing an extraordinary career in the beverage industry. We founded Mutineer in December of 2007, and the idea behind it was I had been working as a sommelier, as a professional wine server, um, and running the wine program at the Beverly Hills Hotel in Los Angeles, as well as I opened Gordon Ramsay's restaurant in West Hollywood. And everyone around me was saying the same thing about wine. They wanted to get into it. They wanted to connect with it. So what we wanted to do with the magazine was scale that ability to connect people with something that we'd become so passionate about being wine and beer and spirits and coffee and tea and soda and water and all the delicious things that make up the fine beverage universe. You know, we're millennial minded. We're, we're the magazine and media company for the next generation of wine and beverage drinkers. I can't emphasize enough how much of an impact the student leadership program at uh, Pierce had on me and, and how much it really empowered me to do what I do today. There's no way I could do the stuff that I'm doing today without having that Pierce College student leadership experience under my belt. Um, nothing, there isn't even a close second place to educational experiences that compare. That was my, that was my education, being a part of that student leadership program. It gave me the skill set that I needed to be successful in, in any field that I wanted to go into. Please welcome Alan Croft. This is amazing. Oh my goodness, Right? <laughs> Hello. Uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for coming out tonight to celebrate these uh, new distinguished alumni honorees and uh, to celebrate the amazingness that is Pierce College. Uh, thank you to Pierce College and the foundation for putting this together. I can remember back to 2001 when I was a student leader and I attended this same ceremony. And uh, one of the inductees was Eileen Lewis, who was the first female fire chief in Tacoma and also the first woman to head a municipal fire department in the country. So it's very humbling to be part of such a truly exceptional group of individuals. Tonight means a lot to me for quite a few reasons, but a big reason is that I'm able to share this with my family who have supported me every step of the way. And they have been patient with me while I have been away trying to conquer the world. Uh, my parents and grandparents are here with me tonight, Jim and Julie Croft and Alan and Marilyn Creighton right over here. Hi guys, give them a little hand. <laughs> I must mention that my parents have found success of their own recently opening up a gluten-free bakery called Julie's Gluten-Free Bakery this past year on South Hill, and I highly suggest driving out to 160th and Meridian <laughs> and uh, trying it for yourself. The s'mores and lemon meringue cupcakes are delicious, but so is everything else, so well worth the trip. Um, I'm also extremely appreciative of the steadfast support uh, from my incredibly beautiful and talented girlfriend, the Comparable, amazing, and exquisitely stunning Ashley Teplin. Hello. So my journey, I've been on a, uh, 
a pretty spectacular journey since graduating from Pierce College 11 and a half years ago. I moved to Los Angeles and started bartending school. I was fortunate to work at a restaurant called Hatfields as a bartender, which was one of the best new restaurants in the country. Um, I caught the wine bug there and uh, immersed myself in wine studies. I became a certified sommelier through the Quartermaster Sommeliers, as well as the Wine and Spirit Education Trust, and then I'm also a certified beer professional through the Cicerone. Um, at the age of 23, I became the youngest sommelier ever at the legendary Beverly Hills Hotel, which is one of the most exclusive properties on the planet, and uh, it's known for its celebrity clientele. We were selling bottles of wine upwards of $10,000 a bottle, and we would offer cognac at $5,000 a glass. Um, single barrel from the late 1700s. Imagine tasting that. It's exceptional. Um, I poured wine for former U.S. presidents, foreign leaders, and of course celebrities. And I can remember taking my mom to lunch at the flagship restaurant there, the Polo Lounge, and she must have gotten up to use the restroom like 10 times to <laughs> awkwardly do the I look, head turn this. Because <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio was two tables down, so she kept uh, hovering over him. Uh, <laughs> After the Beverly Hills Hotel, I helped open up Gordon Ramsay's uh, signature restaurant, the London Hotel, and as you can imagine, working for Chef Ramsay, who's known for his temper on the show, Hell's Kitchen was quite an experience, but as a Pierce College graduate, I was up to the task. <laughs> I eventually left uh, Gordon Ramsay to start Mutiner Magazine, and at the time, I had absolutely no experience in the publishing industry. I never even worked in my high school or college newspaper. Uh, so beyond my beverage training, my experience at Pierce was my education. Uh, we launched Mutineer, our first issue in July 2008. By April 2009, we were picked up for national distribution in bookstores and grocery stores. And it's been pure madness of the best kind ever since. Uh, we've published 28 issues to date, uh, won numerous beverage and publishing industry awards, and have tackled a bunch of ambitious projects. The most special project to me is the aforementioned uh, Clean Water Crusaders Initiative. We partnered with a water relief uh, organization right in Tacoma that used to be called A Child's Right. And uh, we wanted to leverage the power of mutineer in the beverage industry to support water relief, because yes, water is the most important fine beverage of all. We teamed up with Jordan Vineyard and Winery in Sonoma and uh, got a private jet and flew a bunch of celebrities up to Sonoma and did a big fundraiser dinner as well as a comedy festival, all to support our water relief efforts. We also collaborated with a brewery called New Holland Brewing and made our own beer and uh, sold that in benefit of water relief. Um, and we did a whole issue of the magazine dedicated to water relief with industry organizations and companies buying little ads on every page with all that money going to water relief. And that culminated in uh, the purchase and installation of five purified hand washing and drinking fountains in elementary schools in Kathmandu. I had the opportunity to go travel and visit those installations and uh, I did make a, a short 20 minute documentary on the Mutineer website about my experience. It's a little weird to stand up here and boast about all that I have accomplished, um, though I say it all with great pride as it is my experiences here at Pierce that empowered me to do what I have done and everyone involved with Pierce shares a piece of that success. Big thanks go to former Pierce College president Steve Wall, who was always such a big advocate um, of the student leadership program here, uh, as well as Dr. Mari Kruger, who oversaw the student leadership program while I was here, and is an absolute genius of leadership theory and practice. I was so fortunate to have the opportunity to learn from her. It's impossible for me to quantify the impact Dr. Kruger had uh, on me, as well as the student leadership program here at Pierce. I learned what it means to be a leader, including team dynamics, uh, organizational leadership, professional ethics, the art of having a mission and a vision, communication, self-confidence, community responsibility, and professional values. I had the opportunity to be a key leader in a statewide student-led initiative to make college textbooks tax-free. Our student government team organized political debates on campus with such a strong community turnout that we needed to create an overflow room with a video feed. Uh, I learned how to organize events, work with students, and, and just make things happen. Um, the diversity training we received as part of our leadership education had a huge impact on me. As a middle class suburban Caucasian, I thought being well versed in diversity simply meant not being a racist. 
But what I learned is that understanding diversity means to be able to empathize and understand other people's realities, which sounds simple and obvious, but I was amazed at how much my perspective evolved as a result. I carry that perspective with me today as we are beginning a national effort called Drink Careers 101 to empower college students to consider a career in the beverage industry, with one big aspect of the project being to reach out to minority students who are hugely underrepresented in the beverage industry. In closing, I'd like to share a quick story and a few last thoughts uh, with you. On Monday morning, I started to, uh, I, I set aside some time to put together my thoughts for tonight, and soon after I began working on my notes, things took a tragic turn in Boston. I had a difficult time comprehending the events that took place. And I spent the whole afternoon questioning modern society and dwelling on the hopelessness of everything broken in our culture. I took a walk to clear my head, and uh, I decided to turn my thinking towards the solutions and counterbalances to those broken aspects of our society. And to my surprise, my thought process found itself back where it had started, Pierce College. Consider Pierce College's vision statement, which reads, possibilities realized, innovative and engaged learners enriching our local and global communities. Couple this with their mission statement, Pierce College creates quality educational opportunity for a diverse community of learners to thrive in an evolving world. How can you not get excited about that? For all the questions and concerns I was posing to myself, I had found a solution, a glorious answer. Community colleges elevate communities one individual at a time, and I'm one example from a long list of community college success stories. I mean, I help bring clean water to thousands of kids on the other side of the world, which is a beautiful example of an inspired solution to a broken reality made possible by my community college experience. Sorry, just give me a second. I got this. <laughs> <sighs> community colleges are a transformative place where people go from being in one place of their lives to a better place, not only for themselves, but a local community. If four-year institutions and graduate programs are where individuals sharpen their academic swords, then community colleges are where they are transformed from being a raw metal into a serviceable weapon. It's the great equalizer that can enable individuals with determination and fortitude to achieve a seat at the table of higher education and professional development. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, community colleges are nothing short than being the great catalyst for the American dream. I'm a big admirer of Hunter S. Thompson, the writer, and the following passage appears in his classic book, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, with the scene taking place in a circus-themed casino. I hate to say this, said my attorney, as we sat down at the merry-go-round bar on the second balcony, but this place is getting to me. I think I'm getting the fear. Nonsense, I said. We came here to find the American dream, and now that we're right in the vortex, you want to quit? I grabbed his bicep and squeezed. You must realize, I said, that we've found the main nerve. That's how I feel here tonight, that this place is the main nerve of the American dream. And that fills me with great hope and pride. I believe that a college is defined by the men and women who bring it to life. And if people are what make a college great, then I find it hard to believe that there is a finer institution of higher learning in the United States than Pierce College. And I'm humbled and honored in a way that words cannot convey to stand before you as an example of what's possible if you open your mind and passion to this very special place. Thank you.
But if their stories don't get you fired up, I don't know what will. Thank you all so much. And I want to personally thank all of our distinguished alumni honored tonight and those previously honored distinguished alumni who are here to welcome the new class. Thank you for continuing the spirit of Pierce College in all you do. None of our fantastic honorees tonight would have made it here without the support from people like you and the generous contributions that help ensure a Pierce education is accessible for all, for all students willing to work hard. Now, for some of you in the audience know me, and you know I'm just really competitive. So, ha, I get to be first. Uh, I get to be second. <laughs> that was I was told to say that. <laughs> so, I get to be first to make a gift this evening, and I really hope all of you will join me and will consider making a donation today on behalf of our future distinguished alumni, and some of them might be in the room. Maybe I sat with a couple of them over there today. Your envelopes are on the table, and you may leave your gift on the table, or you could give it to one of the college presidents. And another thank you to the board members and former distinguished alumni for sponsoring this banquet. Thank you for continuing to give back. That's what all of us need to be doing. Thank you to everyone for being here to celebrate the accomplishments of our Pierce College alumni tonight. Please feel free to stay and visit with each other as long as you'd like. With the uh, recipients, if you could meet Dr. Johnson and Mr. Lewis to the left of the stage. I'm assuming you're left my right, maybe. We'll figure it out. Uh, we're going to get some photos taken. So if you will join us up here. And for the rest of you, good night and have a wonderful evening.